Travelling salesman problem using branch and bound. Given a list of cities and the distances between each pair of cities, find the shortest possible route that visits each city exactly once and returns to the original city. It is like a Hamiltonian circuit problem but with an added constraint of length. We can calculate a lower bound of length L by finding out the sum SI of the distances from city I to two nearest cities, then compute the sum S of n numbers, divide the result by 2. If all the distances are integers, then round up the result to the nearest integer. So the lower bound will be S by 2. For example, in this graph, if we start with A, we have to see the two nearest cities. For A, it is 1 and 3. So add it here. For B, the nearest cities are A and C with lengths 3 and 6. So add it. For C, it is 1 and 2. For D, it is 3 and 4. For E, it is 2 and 3. When we add up the first two shortest lengths for every cities and then divide it by 2, the value here is 14. This is the lower bound. But if there is a situation where you must include one particular edge, we can modify this lower bound. Example, if you must include an edge AD, the lower bound will be changed like this. 1 plus 5. Initially, you would include 1 and 3. But in this case, you have to include this edge AD. So you consider 1 and 5 as the first two shortest lengths. Similarly for D, you would initially choose 3 and 4 but since you have to include this edge AD, the first two shortest lengths become 3 and 5. When you add up this value and divide by 2, the lower bound will be 16. Now let's see how to solve this problem using this state space tree. Assume A is the root vertex. At node 0, no selection is made. Lower bound as we calculated before is 14. From A, we can go to B, C or D. So find out the lower bound for each of these paths and identify the smallest lower bound. The problem given in textbook has a constraint that if we choose any two intermediate vertices, say B and C, then consider only permutation in which B precedes C. This implicitly defines a tour's direction. Because this graph is undirected, we can generate only tours in which B is visited before C. So node 2 is not considered. At node 3 for A, D, the lower bound is 16. We saw this previously where if we have to include the edge AD, the lower bound will be calculated as 16. This node 4 is suggesting we go to E from A. So the lower bound for it will be 19. Now compare all the lower bounds. Lower bound equal to 14 is the smallest one. So let's choose this and branch out. We are choosing to go to B from A. From B we can go to C, D or E. Let's see the lower bound for all these paths. If we go to C from B, the lower bound will be 16. If we go to D from B, the lower bound will be 16. If we go to E from B, the lower bound will be 19. Comparing these three lower bounds, we can ignore node 7 because it has larger lower bound. Lower bound for node 5 and 6 are both 16. So let's branch out both of them and then check. At this stage, you should consider finishing the Hamiltonian circuit because you have visited 4 nodes. Then from the last node, you have to go back to the root. From node 5, that is after visiting A, B, C, if I visit D, then the next option for me is to visit E and then finally to go back to A. In that case, the length of the tour will be 24. A, B, C, D, E and then A. That will be 3, 6, 4, 3 and then 8. Totally the length is 24.
at node 9 the option is a b c e d and then a so the lengths will be 3 6 2 3 and then 5 totally the length will be 19 we need to also consider node 10 and 11 node 10 is suggesting we take the root a b d c e and then a that will be 3 plus 7 plus 4 plus 2 plus 8 total length is 24 at node 11 it is suggesting that we take the root a b d e c and then a it will be 3 plus 7 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 total is 16 so when we compare all these lengths we can clearly see that at node 11 we have found an optimal solution that means if we follow this path a b d e c a a b d e c a we will have the shortest length of 16 and we will have visited all the vertices exactly once